one verse that pretty much sizes up what I said in the last two videos. All right. I hope you get something out of this. I really do. Because sometimes we read the word and it goes in one ear and out the other now, doesn't it? Listen. 1 John 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Now, I'm going to put that in pat love paraphrase and then add Pat's two cents to it. Here we go. If a man say, I love God, and can't stand the Mexican, the Latino, the black, the nappy head, the curly head. What's up with that? Some of y'all hate the straight hair because you think that white folks came from dogs or from the devil. It's all hatred. However you put that together, if you say I love God and hate your brother, I don't care if your brother's on the other side of the galaxy. If God made him and you hate him, you hate God. Come on now. Or you look at a white person and you hate them because, you know, maybe you're 90 years old. And when you were a kid, you had to watch the, the white police came to lynch your grandfather. And they made you watch. And that's a lot of pain. That's a lot of stuff for a child to process that amount of hatred and that, that, that kind of cruelty on someone you love. But God is able to heal it. But you have nurtured and nurtured and fed that bitterness and that anger. And you really think that God will receive you into glory to be in his presence forever. When you, number one, have not forsaken, I mean, have not forgiven. Number two, you have taken it to another level. You're bitter. Number three, you have gone all the way down the road with not only unforgiveness, but when you look at any white person, hatred just wells up inside of you like lava in a volcano, just getting ready to explode and spew all over everybody. So you spew your hate here and you spew your hate there and it just comes up and it comes up and it's a never ending flow. I don't care how justified Humanly speaking, your hatred might be. It doesn't belong to this white person because they're not the ones that did that. And guess what? God doesn't even want you hating the ones that did it. Now, you may not want to sit down and have coffee with them. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I wouldn't either. But my point is forgiveness is for you, not them. See, while you're forgiven, God's going to get about judging. He won't have to judge you. See, whatever people do to us. Now, I'm, I'm going to share some things. There are some people who have had bad experiences. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth about me. When I was a little kid, it was the black kids that picked on me, not anybody else. But I forgave. With God's help. Now, some of you, it's black kids that picked on you, or Puerto Rican kids, or Mexican kids, or Italians that jumped you and gang, you know, just, just ganged up on you for whatever reason. Or maybe a Jewish person did something that you just can't get over. So, as far as you're concerned, you hate all Jews. Really? Yeah, does that really make sense to you? Think about it. Or you had a sister that dated a black man. And the black man broke your sister's heart. Now, we don't know what really happened because the two of them are going to keep a lot of stuff between them, even if they can't stand each other. But you see color.
And when you see color, you see red. Because what they did to your sister, they made your sister cry. Think about it. If a man say, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. So what that means is you don't love God. That's what that means. See, when God put us in a family, the family is called the body of Christ. For those of you, I'm talking to you brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. I'm not talking about folks who are not in the body. They can't do what we do because we've been empowered to do it, what God wants us to do. But some of you refuse. And when you refuse, you're disobeying God. When you disobey God, willfully you are sinning. Think about it. So when you see in the scriptures, it said, if you do not forgive your brother, God will not forgive you. Um, That's a real loose paraphrase. If you see that in scripture and you say, well, hey, God is not going to be able to forgive me because I will never get over what they did to my daughter, to my son, to my wife, to my cousin, to me. I will never get over it. And I hope they fry in hell. Guess what? God might put you right there in the cell with them in hell if you never give that up. It's a serious thing with God. If we're part of the body of Christ, now there are always black sheep in the family. We know that. And there are runaways. Can't do anything about them if you can't find them and bring them home. And if they don't want to come. But your response is your responsibility. So you have to decide how you're going to react to what has happened what is happening to you. Because that's the only thing you're responsible for is your response. You can be bitter. You can nurse the bitterness. It's my bitterness. I earn this. You can go there if you want. I just hope you're not buried there. Because if you're buried there, there will be a uh, chasm. The chasm. I want to make sure I'm using the right word. Anyway, there'll be a great divide between you and your heavenly Father, which art in heaven. Even though you may think that you have lived a very holy life, and you may know the scriptures backwards and forwards, and you may have won many of thousands to Christ. But if you hate your brother, if you have not charity, that's love, you are a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And you know what they say about empty cans? That's basically what that means. Empty cans make a lot of noise. You don't want to be an empty can clanging your way all the way to hell. Because your pride got in the way and you just refuse to forgive anybody. Mm -mm. Don't go there. Come on up out of that. Come on. Come on. Let me help pull you up. Come on. Come on. You don't want to do that. It's too nasty. It's too, it has too much torment tied to it. And there is no peace when you refuse to forgive. When you refuse to let it go. Now, look, if you can't forgive, that's cool. Because guess what? When you can't forgive, all you got to do is say, Lord, I can't forgive. Would you help me? Give me the ability. And guess what? It's done. But either way, you got to be willing, even if you don't want to. Now, I'm not telling you something I don't know. I didn't read this in the book. But I had a few people I really resented. And I told the Lord when I read that scripture that if I don't forgive, I won't, God won't forgive me. I didn't like reading that. 
because I had no intentions of ever forgiving some of the folks that hurt me in a variety of ways. So I said to the Lord, now this might help you to know how to pray. I said to the Lord, well, Lord, I don't want to forgive them. Now I'm not refusing to, I just don't want to. And number two, I don't have the ability. There's nothing in me that wants to forgive them. So if it's that important to you, then I'm asking you to give me the ability because otherwise I won't be able to. Down through the years, God has even staged it where I crossed a lot of their paths and found out there was no more anger in me. Where did it go? There was no more, no more not in my stomach. No more lump in my throat. No more resentment. Bitterness. God just up in smoke. How did you do that? I had to ask the Lord that a lot of times. How did you do that? It's gone. The anger is gone. The bitterness is gone. Supernatural ability to forgive is right there available for you to take advantage of if you're just willing to obey when you know nothing in you can do so. Just ask God for the ability. It's just that simple. And guess what? Your peace remains with you. It's a beautiful experience, forgiveness. And it is even more beautiful with reconciliation. Because some relationships, for me, have been restored. Some friendships have been restored as a result of forgiveness. And with forgiveness comes love. You can't forgive without some kind of love working up in your heart. And the love of God is shed abroad in your heart, leaving no shame, no sorrow, no regret. When you're full of God's love, I'm telling you, you see people of other races differently. You see people of different ages differently. You see people who are emotionally immature, hateful people, indifferent people, a whole lot of things that turn you off naturally. God begins to show you things about them through his eyes of love that totally turn off and totally diminishes your judgment call. Because when you're not judging, you see a whole lot more clearly. And when you see a whole lot more clearly, you're not judging. You understand. That's a big difference. And it makes life so much nicer. Yeah, do it God's way. Try it.